So what's been going on? Survive the whole. So far, so good. Yeah. So far, so good. Um, pretty good. Oops. All right, Sam, anybody coming besides you? Yeah, I don't know. That's what I was wondering. A little before. Oh, we're up oh to there's someone. <laughs> so what's this? It's a top producers club? Or what is it? We're called the producers club. Okay. Um, it's productivity coach. towards the newer agents, but it's for any agent. Sure. Um, you know, it's just coaching to help get them going. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so you're that, that guy now. Who was before? Did that for me. Well, All right. Okay. Because Jeremy Mullins over at River Town has been for the longest tenure doing that. Right. Um, okay. Good man. More than that. Katrina, Catalina. Over at ACs. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But I've got a coach who has, he coaches productivity coaching for me. Like, putting my market runners on all of the producers' clubs. So we have to bring team specific to this. Starts trying to restrain today, and uh, I'm gonna have to block it because we have like three. Oh, that probably shouldn't be a problem. We, yeah, I don't think so. So, well, when you won there twice now, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna. Sam, you probably haven't met Ray before. This is Ray Stark from America's Preferred Home Warranty, Samantha Zender. Hello, Samantha. Hello. Ray sent you an, sent you an introduction um, email. I'm sorry, you said you did? I may have, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Yeah, Sam just did her first deal couple, three weeks ago and closing pretty soon. And 
we had the discussion of home warranty that I mean everybody everybody knows that they have to do the ABA form for the warranty and they have to do either an acceptance or a waiver of it but most people tend to do the waiver because they don't know any different and they got to have something signed so they just have it waived um, you know you guys I think both know that I'm a big proponent of the home warranty I've said this many times um, I put it on all listings I put it I offer I ask the seller to pay for it in all of my offers with some exceptions um, you know, and raise the guy to give you better explanation as to all of the things that it covers, and best usage for it, and kind of how to sell it. Too. Yeah, how to offer it. Yeah, yeah. Um, are we going to jump right into it? Yeah, might started? as well because I don't okay. know who else is coming. All right, I'm Brett, kind of we go on this side and leave sit down. Sit down. Yeah, we don't need to stand for an hour or forty-five minutes. Was that it? I thought we were going to do this for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Samantha and Sue Ellen are here. Sue Ellen, are you still with us? Yep. I am. All right. Um, well, Sue Ellen, I think you do, you've done some warranties, correct? Yeah, I have, but yes. So, so I'll stay basic, but then I, I want you to kind of transition in, into really what a home warranty can do. Of course, we're going to protect your homeowner and we're going to fix the fridge and we're going to you know, replace the heat exchanger. We're gonna do all those kind of things on covered items. But think of it as this, um, kind of like Dave said, you guys have so many disclosures to, to send out and you have to be in compliance. And I know what's happening is the, the, the waiver part of the page of our brochure is going with that. And it's, so, so to be compliant, I think many of you, and I'm not pointing out YouTube, but it does happen. Um, it's just part of your disclosures and these people just are signing, 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 signing. And yes, you're being compliant. You got the waiver, but sometimes you forget maybe to revisit offering the warranty. So what I've kind of done is not focus on, you know, what we cover and what we don't, but rather what can it do for you? If you offer it to every single client, if you get in the habit of that, because I, I was an agent once way back in the day and we get in the habit of, uh, predetermining who we think we needs the warranty, you know, the older house that's 12 years old, the original appliances and the home inspection looks good, but things are, you know, on the fritz or, you know, they're old. That's the person we're going to sell the warranty to. What I want you to get in the mindset of is offer it to every single person. Don't prejudge or predetermine who you think wants it or should need it. If you offer it with the same value to every single client, I guarantee you, you'd be surprised on who actually is going to take it. Because if you don't offer it and they sign that disclosure and you and you forgot to to offer it, you know their their sister or brother or parents could have had a great experience with a home warranty on a, on one of their you know closings or listings of a home and they just forgot about it. But if you would have offered it, they would have it would have triggered like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they, my cousin had a good experience with a home warranty. Whatever the case may be get in the habit of offering it to every single person. And then if they say no, or, you know, certainly don't lose a deal out of it, but um, do, do yourself a favor and just at least offer it with the right expectations. And really then get in your head is what can it do for you? For every time someone uh, makes a claim, I give you a, a claim card to what we covered, how much it was for and which client it was for. And if you have that, and I'm going to tell you that, if you take that opportunity to call the client, it could be six months later after closing or whatever the case may be, you have an opportunity to talk about good news, how you just saved that client $900. And if you didn't take that warranty, um, you know, they would have been out $900. But that phone call makes you look like a hero. And natural human instincts or what I have a, a, some top producers have told me is law of reciprocation is if you call them, they admit that you just saved them $900 and all you want in return is a name to maybe go call a, a, for a referral. Human instinct, law of reciprocation is to try to return that favor. I'm going to return, they saved me $900 and they just want someone that I may have talked to that might be wanting to list a home. 
So for every time that someone accepts the home warranty, don't think, well, it may or may not work. I might get a, the warmest lead possible out of it, right? So it can be a referral system as well. And, you know, I, I, I drink the KW Kool-Aid. I know you guys have the 36 point touch. That can be one of your touches. Or if, if it's, there's no claim, or I would put it right on your touch system. Every month, every 30 days, call the person that accepted the warranty and just remind them that they even have it. You wouldn't believe how many people forget that they even have a warranty because they just signed all these disclosures. <laughs> and some agents, believe it or not, put it in there and the homeowner didn't even know it. So, um, so every 30 days, put it on as a touch. Call, remind them they have a warranty. And what's that do? It makes you stay top of mind, right? And that's the name of the game, top of mind. Um, but Dave can probably give me the exact figure, but I think it's 80 or 88% of homeowners would use their realtor again, but they don't because they lost contact with them. Um, and I'm sure neither one of you do that uh, because you do the Keller Williams way. You have a point system or a touch system. So make, you know, the warranty can be part of growing your business. And that's kind of the mindset I want you to maybe start changing as far as um, what a warranty can do. Um, now, I'll get basic again. A home warranty covers things that are, that are mechanical in the home, and they have to be in working order as they should at time of close, okay? We don't think, we don't fix things or repair things or replace things that are already broken. So if, if you have a buyer and, and they accept the warranty um, and they call, and you know something's already broke or it's on the home inspection, we're gonna find that out and we're, there's not gonna be coverage there, okay? And the reason I say that is we need to present this with the right expectations because if you just say your house is 12 years old, the original appliances and the, and the furnace is, you know, it's working as it should, but um, it's gonna break at any minute. Um, the, the sign here, you'll get a new one if it does. That's not the way to present the warranty. You wanna present it with the right expectations because it can work in the opposite effect that I just explained, it could be, why did that agent sell me this warranty? It's a piece of crap, it doesn't cover anything. Well, they had the wrong expectations. So presenting it correctly, and Dave could probably tell you how he present, presents it after I'm done here. Um, but, it, and I will say, I was thinking about this this morning when before I was gonna come in here and think about preparing and stuff. Dave puts a ton of warranties on, and I don't think I've ever talked to Dave about an issue on a, on a claim because he presents it correctly, okay? We may have had something come up in the past, but I'm, I'm sure we got it worked out, but as many warranties Dave has done, <clears throat> we've never had an issue because it, he presents it correctly, okay? Now, I don't wanna confuse the issue, but if you have what's becoming very, very, very popular now because of these uncertain times and people are tapping every resource they have for a down payment, they don't have any more money, is, you know, Dave said he, if he's representing the buyer, almost 90% of the time he negotiates in, like, we want to buy your house, but will your seller buy us a home warranty to give us a peace of mind and feel good? And that's 80% of the home warranties is it's negotiated in at time of close by the buyer's agent. But if you have, if you're representing a seller, you can do the same thing in, a, in the same effect, only the seller can have coverage during the listing period, okay? So someone says, yep, Samantha, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna list my house with you. And then you say, great, one of the ways I'm gonna sell your house uh, for the most money in the least amount of time and less negotiations is I wanna offer you this home warranty because I'm gonna put it on the MLS that it comes with a home warranty. And oh, by the way, you're gonna have coverage during the listing period too, okay? Now, there are some limitations on what will pay out for the seller. Uh, because if it never closes, that seller doesn't ever pay for it. So even if we went in and repaired something or replaced something during the listing period, and then they say, you know what, Samantha, I don't, I don't want to sell this house. We don't have to move. Let's take it off the market. We eat that money. So we're limiting our exposure to $1,000 for the seller during the listing period. Now, once it transfers, now I said essentially they're buying it for the buyer anyway at close because it closes seller pays for it, it automatically transfers to the new buyer. And so what did that just do? It 
skipped the part of negotiating it in. It is already there, okay? Um, in your seller head coverage. Once it closes, it transfers to the new buyer for one from one year day of close, then a cumulative max allowance. You know, I said $1,000 for the seller. Once it goes to the buyer, it's $25,000 because that's who we're really interested in, in giving warranty help for. The madness of putting a seller's warranty on, yes, is to give them some coverage, but it, attract, it attracts buyers, okay? A house that comes with a home warranty. And then I don't know how many times you've ever looked at a listing card that said sellers providing a home warranty, probably very infrequently. And what I put on mine, if you go back and look at um, any listing I've ever had or most any listing I've ever had, it will state on there that the seller is providing a one-year home warranty for the buyer's added peace of mind after they move in. It's just part of the marketing that's done on the listing. And then when the offer comes in, most of the time it just comes in seller to provide the warranty advertised on the listing. Once in a great while, somebody will say, an agent will write in there, and it's probably just because I'm more out of habit than anything else, seller to provide a American Home Shield warranty. Well, we're not using America's Home Shield. And, and I'll say, I'll just, we'll just counter it out that we're already providing a home warranty. It's already on the house. It's already been ordered. Oh, okay. So they're, they know they're getting a home warranty, but it's the idea of promoting it up front so that everybody knows there's a warranty on there because most listings that you see on the MLS don't say anything about a home warranty. Um, you know, it's, and the sellers are, are always, again, 99% of the time, if not 100% of the time, they're good with it. Yeah. And the way I present it is I put it on, when I go to a listing presentation, I've got the paperwork all filled out. I already have the a home warranty on there. Uh, I haven't ordered it for, yet, as technically. I haven't gone online and ordered the home warranty, but I put it on a net sheet because I can always take it off if I have to, but if I put it on there, it's already there. They just, to some degree, they expect, I mean, they're, they're accepting of whatever fees are on there. That's just part of selling a house is there are all these fees and the home warranty is one. And I won't tell them it's an automatic one. I'll tell them it's an optional one, but they're usually okay with it. And the, there's two different, Warrant, I shouldn't say two different warranties, two different ways of whether it's a listing or a buyer, it's presented in two different ways. As a listing, it's the standard home warranty. It's just the, the, the basic $425 home warranty that the seller gets some coverage on while it's listed and it transfers to the buyer. If it's a buyer, I'm writing in there that the seller to provide a one-year home warranty well, one year APHW home warranty, and I'll put the price on there, $600. The difference being the $600 one is, well, the 425 one that the seller is offering has a $100 deductible or service fee, whichever way you want to call it. The one that I'm asking for the seller to pay for is a $50 deductible or service fee and the $140 buyer's upgrade, which gets them, gets my buyer a little bit more coverage. When it's, when the offer is presented, it's presented as a $600 fee to the seller. The listing agent, they know the basic prices of warranties. They're anywhere from 350 to $700 probably, you know, so coming in with a fee of $600, more times than that, it gets accepted. They don't counter it out, you know. And the only way I wouldn't, and I told with some exceptions, if you're writing an offer with you're competing with somebody else, I might not put it in there in the offer because I don't want to jeopardize losing the offer because of the home warranty, but the buyer will still know about the home warranty and the ability to purchase it themselves if they want to going forward. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, Dave has done a lot of these, so he's confident, you know, again, I was, I was an agent and it's, it's, uh, it, it, it could feel risky putting it right in your net sheet, 
especially if you're competing with other with other offers. So, um, but Dave is, I know, presents it in the way of like, these are the fees, and yes, you want a home warranty. You tell me why you don't, okay? Because he believes in it. So, but again, I mean, you don't, you know, they say I don't want to do that. I mean, take it out and then maybe revisit it after the fact. Okay, at least give them the brochure and you know, stay, you know, take a look at this. And here's one of the things too, when you're presenting it, whether it be to another agent, um, a homeowner, a buyer, understand it and believe it, believe in it. If you don't understand it and how it, how it works, it's easier to just say, wave it and forget about it. Cause I don't understand it. If you understand it and how it works, then it's much easier to present it to somebody else. Yeah. And that's as your rep, that's where I come into play. I mean, if you, uh, I, if, if you are presented with a question that you don't know the answer to, you know, give me a call. 90% um, of the answers are in here. I'm not asking you to memorize this, this pamphlet or this brochure, but a lot of your answers are in here. If you just give a quick read through it, um, I would, I would suggest doing that. Um, and, and then presenting the warranty, it's, it's literally a 60 second, 60 second thing. Um, and, and, and here's how you can do it. You can have your brochure. I don't know if you guys have this in front of you or not, but you can say, you know, I really think that it's a good idea for you guys to consider a home warranty. And remember, whether you knew or new or not, they don't know that. And you are their counselor when it really comes down to it. You're the one that went to class, has their certificate on the wall, and you are the one that, I mean, they chose you, okay? So if you say, I think it's a good idea for you to consider or take a look at this warranty program, chances are they're going to, okay? And you can just real quickly, oops, when I picked the warranty, it's all written, written on. Um, but you can just, so this is the last page, you can say, here, here's items that have coverage. And then real quick, you can go to, Go to the other page, and this gives this kind of works twofold. It kind of shows them how to read it because they're probably not going to go, "Oh yes, I want that right now." They might want to take a home, go home, and look at it. But then you can just flip to, um, for example, Central uh, AC was on that list of items that has coverage, and here's an example of what's covered and what's not. Okay, and and then you can go so on. You know, take a look at this tonight. Um, I think it's a good idea if if you take a look at it. It does. It certainly doesn't cover everything, but it, if it is a covered item, it'll certainly help cushion that blow if it does cover the whole cost. One of the things to kind of take a look at what it covers and what it doesn't cover is it covers things, there's an exception or two, but it covers things inside the house, not things outside the house. Right, within the foundation of house or attached garage. Right, so it's, it's not gonna cover, you know, the well outside it there is pool coverage that can be gotten um but yeah. it doesn't come with the there actually is well well, well pump coverage yeah, you, tell, you correct me <laughs> yeah. when i'm wrong so. um but but again you, you don't have to know that and you don't have to say you know it, it, it covers the well and it covers the ring around the toilet and it, you don't have to do that if you just generalize it's a good idea it's certainly not going to cover everything here are the items that have coverage um, I think it's a good idea for you to take a look at the brochure and maybe let me know tomorrow. It's helped many of my past clients. Samantha, if you're new, you can say it's helped many of uh, my fellow Keller Williams uh, agents within the agency. Um, you know, ju just things like that. Ray, I have a question. Yep. Ray? Yes. Um, would it cover a sump pump? Yes, there's sump pump coverage. There's a 30 day waiting period on sump pump coverage. Uh, Why yes, is there a 30 day? Um, the biggest reason is if there, if, if Dave and I lived in a house and it, the sump pump and the well pump was used to our capacity and all of a sudden a family of six comes in and there, it's going to, there's much more wear and tear on it. So specifically for the, for those two pumps, we have a 30 day waiting period. I mean, bluntly, just to say, because if something's going to break, it's going to be within the first 30 days on a, on a pump. That's why. We're just limiting our exposure there a little bit on, on the pump system. 
I will tell you. Yeah, I will tell you. I will tell you, this is a relationship that we have. I don't know if we're being recorded, and I hope not. <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, three days later, some of the wealth, the sump pump goes out, and they have a home warranty, and you give me a call. Sometimes I can get that 30 days waived. Okay. okay. That's kind of like when someone calls in to make a claim, the claims people are black and white. They, they, they have black and white answers. When it becomes a gray issue, then I'm the gray guy. You can always give me a call. Okay. Um, you know, I heard you, I heard you say very interesting. I've never, I mean, I've been doing this seven years now. Can you believe it? Seven years now. And I may have had a 30 day waiting period on a pump come up once. It really isn't that big of an issue. Um, any other questions? Good question. Well, here's, here's well, a, my question. Go ahead. No, you can go ahead. No, I was just going to say, sometimes I'll run into a case where I'm sitting with a seller, um, more so than it would be with a buyer. Um, although a buyer might ask the question, and that is, so this, this would take the place, or why would I need a home warranty when I have home insurance? Yeah, so home, home warranty covers the mechanicals of the, of the home in, in an attached garage. So anywhere from the garage door opener to the garbage disposal, to the water softener, to the water heater, to the HVAC system, mechanical workings of the home versus structural with homeowner's insurance. Okay, so let's say for example, the water heater fails and all the water spills out the bottom and it ruins the baseboards and the carpet, the carpet padding and the drywall. We'll take care of the water heater but your homeowner's insurance would take care of the other, the after effects. Sort of like um, car insurance versus the car warranty. I mean, some comparison there, if you're, you know, your, your car has a warranty on it and, but your insurance is not necessarily gonna cover a warranty item. Yeah, that's how I like that, that's good. Um, I want to bring this up because I just, I literally had this phone call on the way here from Susan Kazma at Success Realty just right down the road. I don't want to confuse you, but this is, this is good stuff. If you have a listing warranty, the seller has coverage during the listing period, right? And a potential buyer comes in and of course does a home inspection. And if something, let's just say the heat exchanger, it's blowing, the furnace is blowing room temperature air or the AC for that matter. It's not doing its job. And it comes up on the home inspection. Now I said that a home warranty covers things that are in working order as they should at time of closing. Erase that from your head if you have a listing coverage for the seller during the listing period. If it's, if you have listing coverage, and one of these things fails under the seller's program, and it's, and, it, and it's something that we cover, an item failed that we covered, that's in the home inspection, then pre-existing condition is out the window because we want to help you sell the house. So if the heat exchanger went out, you know, everyone's turning on their, their furnaces now, and let's say you have a house for sale and they have listing coverage and the heat exchanger goes out, bam, you're the hero. They can get their they can get their new heat exchanger, and what's that do? It cuts down on any negotiating by the buyer at that point. They're certainly not going to pay listing price if the heat exchanger is broke, probably, or there's going to be a, a, con a concession or an allowance or a credit somewhere in the deal that's going to get negotiated in. Okay. Seller's yeah. warranty. So pre if, if it's found in a potential buyer's home inspection pre-existing doesn't apply on covered items for the seller. Question is it pertains to that, or is that, given the example you gave, does that only come into play if they have the seller's preferred upgrade? That, or? that particular one, because this upgrade covers your HVAC system. Right, Yeah. because if you don't have the preferred upgrade, then it wouldn't be covered. In my example, no. Correct. Okay. That's correct. So always, if you're doing a seller's if you're doing a seller's warranty and they say yes, always offer the, you know, for an additional 75 bucks, they can get more appliances and your HVAC systems covered. Good question. Yeah. I know I've been throwing a lot of information on Samantha. Um, hopefully you're still with us here. 
you can always call me later at any point, but um, do you guys know how to order the warranty? I don't. Sue Ellen, how? Okay. Was that Samantha or Sue Ellen? Sorry, I didn't realize my video wasn't on. Here I am. Oh, no, I don't. Are. Okay. All right. Sue Ellen, how are you ordering them? Are you well, calling them? I talked to you and then I called the company and got the number. And now I have to go in there and because you told me I had to go online. Well, I didn't say you have to, but it makes your life a lot easier if you get to learn that system. Um, right. so, and I just haven't had time today. Okay. Yep. So, but I gave you the instructions, right? Yes. Samantha, can you do me a favor? Can you email me? And then this evening I'll email you instructions on how to do that. And yep. then if you get any hangups, just give me a call. Okay. My email, ad my email address is rstark at aphw.com. Okay. And then Samantha, Sue Ellen, you probably know this, Dave certainly does. If you fill out what's called a data collection form with a closed transaction with our home warranty, we'll send you a check for 75 bucks. You're not gonna get rich off it, but if you do two, a couple of those a month, it's a new pair of shoes, it's some marketing items, it's a gift for your client, it's desk fees, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, but it seems very small, but it adds up. Um, last year, uh, I shared this with Dave, last year we, with the Keller Williams brand in our region, so Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana, uh, we profit shared just from that $75 with the KW brand, uh, $1.3 million. So that's a huge example, but what my point is, you do a couple of these a month, it, you know, it's kind of nice because you forget about it. Now, that data collection form is always a problem because you guys forget to do it. If you go online <laughs> and you order the warranty, you can't miss doing it. There's a big red tab that says data collection form. And once you complete it, that red tab turns into gray, then you know you did it. And you have 60 days from the day after closing to get that in. So there's plenty of time there. And that's, that's simply a RESPA form. Um, it used to be back in the day, probably when Dave started or Sue Ellen, I don't know, that just by adding a warranty, we could do that. No, that's called a kickback and that's against the law. So you have to do a service for us. And that's what the lawyers of RESPA have come up with is that data collection form. If you don't do you it- want me to go you want me to go online at APHO, APHW office at APHW.com? www.APHW.com, not office. Wait a minute, where do I find that? Because I'm looking at your... Uh, that here, here, here. Is that email address, but that's not where I want you to go. Okay, tell me again www.aphw.com. It'll keep And in there, then I follow the steps. Yeah, you'll go into the Realtor tab and then follow those steps. Samantha, don't do okay. that yet until you hear from me tonight because I'm going to do a couple things before you before that. Right. Right. Um, and, then, and then, yeah, once you create Sue Ellen, once you create your username and password, all the warranties you've ever done are going to be up in there. And let's just say you closed on one. I gotta do a password. What's that? I got to go in and create a password. Ah. No, let's do this. Let's do this. Sue Ellen, before you do that, let's do the same thing I'm going to do for Samantha. Email me. I'm going to do something on my end and I'm going to make your life easier. You're not going to have to create all that stuff. I'm going to do it for you. Shoot me an email. I right? would love that. <laughs> rstark at aphw.com. Just in the subject line, say, hey, Ray, uh, set me up with a password, please. Okay. I do not have your email. So just a second. What's your, okay, go ahead. Email again. rstark. So R S T A R K at A P H W dot com.
Okay. So you want me to email you and you're going to... Yeah, just email me and then I'm going to set something up for you and Samantha. Um, so you don't have to do some of these steps that can get a little confusing. Bless you, Ray. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and what you, what you do, hey. and the way you do this when you order one online, if you go on a listing appointment and you sign up, they sign up with you to list their house and you come home tonight with all the paperwork all filled out, I'm going to jump online tonight and order that warranty. It's there. Nobody has to pay for it right now. It goes right. in. It goes into command as a, a an invoice for a home warranty. Uh, it's your proof that they've signed it for a home warranty. Um, and if it's a buyer, once I get the offer accepted, I go in there and I order the home warranty. Now, who gets the seventy five dollars? The seventy five dollars goes to the person that ordered the home warranty. So it's kind of one of these things and keep this in the back of your mind. Samantha, if you write an offer on Sue Ellen's listing and Sue Ellen doesn't have a home warranty on it and you negotiate a home warranty, you want to make sure that you order the home warranty, not Sue Ellen, because Sue Ellen's going to get the $75 if she orders it, even though it was you that prompted it. So it's, that's kind of a key little trick yeah. in there for that $75. It goes to whoever orders the home warranty. Yeah. Um, I have had one case that I remember of a couple of years ago where I had the listing with the $425 home warranty on it. The buyer was familiar enough with home warrant or the buyer's agent was familiar enough with home warranties that the buyer wanted an upgraded version. This house had a pool in it and I had already ordered the home warranty and I don't recall, I think, I may have gone in, I think, and ordered the upgrades of the to the warranty that was already on there. So it ended up being a $700 warranty or something like that. But then I just notified the title company that the seller is paying the 425 and the buyer is paying the rest of it. So they take it out of the closing at the right in the right places because the title company mails the check to the warranty company at the end of the transaction for them to get paid. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a good point. If you have one on your listing, the buyer can like make up the difference if they oh, want. Yeah, they, they want to get an upgraded version. Absolutely. Yeah. And if the if the and if they choose not to at time of closing, let's say you you had a listing warranty for your seller, closed transfers to the buyer, and the buyer just has the basic program. That buyer has 30 days from the day after closing to do any upgrades. They can call us and add pool coverage or the the buyer's preferred upgrade. They have 30, they have time to, to upgrade. Now here's something you don't hear or very unlikely that you would hear. When does APHW contact the homeowner to try to re-up them for another year? Is it like nine or 10 months? Yep. And so, so most of our contracts are for one year and we have a whole another department that the 10th and 11th month into their first year, we're going to call and see if they want to renew. Um, you don't get paid on that, but you don't get paid on that. No. <laughs> um, I will tell you, you can sometimes look, look at hero here, unless you have a concession or, uh, I keep calling it a concession. Um, where you have money to pay, money you left over. Anyway, if, if someone says, well, I want a two year because I want longer coverage, look, make yourself look like a hero and say, you know what? I, no, you don't. I'm gonna give you the one year. One, it's gonna be less expensive, but two, remember I said they have $25,000 of cumulative coverage. If they do a two year, that $25,000 goes over two years. It doesn't start over after a two year warranty. So let them have the full $25,000 for the first year. And then, then when they renew, they get another $25,000. So it, that's just a little piece of like, you know, that's cool that you want that, but, but I, you I don't because I'm looking out for you, you know, um, save yourself a little money. And then, and then in the second year, when they ask you to renew, you can make a monthly payment versus all up front. And you have three different, diff different deductible options. Um, 
So, so if you have any other questions about that, let me know. I just want to hit on one more thing. Um, you guys have been awesome. You know, I, I, we started this out with, I know you're just getting the way, some people are just getting the waiver to be compliant. Now, that isn't just a procedure. There's a reason why Keller Williams is asking you the very last page of the brochure, and it's, and it's in your dot loop or DocuSign or command, wherever it is now. <laughs> The very last page is that waiver that you're that you're needed to get. You don't have to fill this out. They just say, Samantha, you know what? I don't want that warranty. You say, okay, no problem. I need you to sign this waiver. Okay. That works a couple different ways. One, if someone's kind of tuned out or they're sick of signing and all of a sudden you're saying, okay, sign this waiver, it might give you another opportunity to revisit offering the warranty. But two, you guys all pay, whether you know it or not, you pay errors and omissions insurance every quarter or every whatever it is. And that's in case some client takes you to court, okay? For whatever reason. If you have to go to court, you have your, you have your insurance that you pay. If you get taken to court and whether they accept the warranty or if you can produce this waiver that you offered it, we'll pay 75% of your E&O deductible up to $3,700. So nothing warranty related. They just take you to court because they're jerks and they didn't think you represented them well, whatever. Or seller disclosure disputes or boundary disputes. We've got your back. That's why Keller Williams as a brand has said, we want America's preferred home warranty as our preferred home warranty company of choice. So it's not just Nancy or somebody making you get this waiver. It, there's a reason for it. And it's because we've got your back. We're just asking you to offer it, okay? So that's the reason. I, I, I kind of lost touch of that after seven years that people just really don't know why they're doing that. And it's actually to protect you. Okay. So I just want to throw that out there. And you have a good coach like Dave. He reminds you of those things. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Sucking up. <laughs> I mean, you well, take it no, and that's that, that, I mean, there's, like Ray said, there's a reason, there's a method of the madness. There's a reason why everything has to be for compliance purposes that somebody has to sign something. Yeah, you get tired of doing it, but the reason it's there is somebody got screwed someplace in the past right. <laughs> um, by somebody and, uh, and attorneys have turned around and added more documents. I mean, um, you know, Samantha, unfortunately, you won't get to go to your closing since they're going to not be closing here, but it, it'll be interesting for you to see the first time, well, I shouldn't say the first time. I mean, do you own your house that you're in? Okay. Have you ever been to a closing of a no. purchase? Okay. That's okay. You, you be, yeah, <laughs> you'll be surprised and maybe you wouldn't be at the amount of documents. And, and I always like to joke when I'm in a closing sometimes, is, you know, with people are sitting there that every document is a CYA form because every document is signing is covering somebody's butt from the previous document because <laughs> it, there didn't used to be so many of them, but there's so many of them now because somebody has been sued for some reason somewhere. And so there, now there's a new form to cover that one. Um, so yeah, that's why those are all there. But yeah, going back to the beginning, you know, the best thing to tell you about the home warranty product is just understand it. It, it, it makes it a whole lot easier to try to sell it or to offer it, you know, in a, in a case like a competing offer where you may not want to put it in the offer, but letting your client know that I'm a big believer in these, um, that it might be something you want to consider getting, you know, and you can, you've got some time to think about it. They don't have to let you know by tomorrow. Um, and with a listing, like I said, I go in there full bore knowing that I'm putting a, putting it on the listing. Um, and if, and I'll explain that it's an optional item, but they don't, they very seldom will like say, well, I'll take it off if I don't have to have it. Because again, one of the things Ray mentioned and he kind of skimmed over it, but I will bring it up to the seller is that homes with home warranties on them will sell faster and for more money, statistically speaking, than those that don't have a home warranty on them. Yeah. And nobody ever asked me what the statistics because I don't really always know what the statistics are anyway. <laughs> well, it's, statistically, NAR says, National Association of Realtors, it'll sell 11 days faster 
and they actually put a dollar amount on it of $2,240. But in this market, don't even start throwing out numbers. Yeah. Just say faster and less negotiating. And um, I have a one question. Thing we, yep. Um, do you encourage people to buy warranties if it's a fixer upper where you know, you know, it's a low, low priced house and you know, the refrigerator, the stove, they're all pretty worn out. Do you still push warranties? Because your warranties only pay for what that value is. I'm going to speak as an APHW representative and then I'll let Dave answer that there becomes, um, if everything's in working order as it should, there's not an age limit. So yes, I would. But if you know, and this is your career, and you are a professional, and you, you and the homeowner know things are broken, I mean, you have to sleep at night. <laughs> and I'm not saying you, Sue Ellen, the, the agent and the homeowner. Yeah. So just knowing that I, I'm trying to do my fiduciary responsibility as a real estate agent here. If it's in working order, as it should, there's no age limit. Okay. Okay. Only so if uh, I have a buyer and we go in, we're looking at this $125,000 kind of a fixer upper and, they're getting, and um, we get inspections. And then, you know, inspections, they turn everything, they should at least, turn everything on, make sure it's working order. Yep. Now, there's not a warranty with it at that time. So should I encourage my client, the buyer, to purchase the home warranty? Absolutely. Sure. And that's that's the okay. classic case of offering the warranty. Let's wait till we see the right. comes back at. And if everything's in working order, but, it, but we all know it's old, but it's working as it should, absolutely, yeah. yes. Okay, perfect, you, that helps me a lot. If you get a buyer who's buying the house with the sole intention of ripping out the insides and you know, gonna remodel the kitchen, gonna put in all brand new cabinets and appliances and gonna replace the furnace and all this stuff and they're gonna do this because it's a flip and that's exactly all they're intending to do, um, I wouldn't necessarily have them buy the warranty because the warranty is not going to go out and buy new appliances for them just because. However, when they turn around and sell that house, then I would put a warranty on it. Right. And that's exactly, that's a nine years ago before, before I started this industry, I bought a flipped home and that agent that sold me the house, just, he paid for the warranty himself. It was a closing gift to me. And by gosh, I renewed five years after that, and I used it four times. I mean, oh when, I, when I interviewed for this job, <laughs> I was like, I can sell a, I can sell a home warranty. I'm a walking testimonial. So, oh, so yeah. Great. Yeah. Now here's one thing you'll hear occasionally. Um, I, I want to say, and don't quote me on this, but one of the agents in the office has is 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 a semi believer in the home warranties but lists homes that tend to be higher end homes and the mindset is i don't put a home warranty on it because the homes tend to be newer and a little more upscale therefore they typically you know the buyer is going to be more upscale and the, having a home warranty isn't isn't that big a deal um they're a little more sophisticated buyer, whatever the case may be. So they don't put a home warranty on it. Personally, I would do exactly the opposite. I was, I was hoping you would go there this because this is true what he's going to say. I guarantee because, a, because a furnace that's 10 years or 15 years old is a 15 year old furnace in an $800,000 house, just like it is in a $150,000 house. It may be a bigger furnace in the $800,000 house than it is in the $150,000 one, but it's still a 15, 20 year old furnace. And water heater might even be a better example because a water heater probably isn't gonna last you 15 years. And if it's been in there for 15 years, it could go out any day. Yeah. Um, yeah. A home warranty is price proof and market proof because no matter what, here in Samantha and, Mary, and Sue Ellen's, statistically, 
for every 10 homes that you sell, seven of those homeowners, there's going to be one of these failures. 70% of everybody that you list or sell a home on, something's going to fail, whether it's high end or the flipper. Um, so, and, and so, um, what I wanted him also to say is don't prejudge just because it's a million dollar house and or three million dollar house things still fail okay um, so, and just because it's a 10 year old house doesn't make it all that much better than a 110 year old house right and again you gotta if it's a year old house and we even have a new construction warranty which I won't confuse anybody right now but off, I started out, offer it to every single person. One, to cover your butt for your e &L coverage. And you'd be surprised at how many people will actually say yes. But do it with the right expectations. So, okay. um, if you haven't gotten anything out of this, I hope that you can see my passion and my sincerity and the relationship that Dave and I have created. Um, I just live in Rockford. I'm a local rep. Call me anytime. Um, for the most part, my phone is on 24-7. Um, so if you want to know more after this and you get involved in doing these things, more and more, more and more questions are going to come up. I'm here for you guys. He's good at responding to emails too. So yeah. he does that most anytime. Yep. I just send him an email. Okay. <laughs> going to get me hooked up on this thing so yep, I, I, I sent that to you and ray i would like to meet with you yeah uh, absolutely yep I, ha I have another thing i want to talk to you about but i don't want to take up everybody's time and this was helpful guys thank you very much awesome. good glad yeah. to samantha good I'm gonna luck. Say good luck with the Pardon? meeting call me anytime Okay, yes, yes, I do want to meet with you because I do have some questions. And um, okay, I'm leaving. I got to go, guys. Thank you so much. That was good. Thanks for, thanks for joining. Any other questions, Sam? Um, I don't think, I just had one thing. When you are putting it on your listings, um, is it a selling point for people to have that coverage? Like, I know it's a selling point because you it sells faster, less negotiating that, but is it also a selling point for sellers to be like, you're covered during this, um, you know, during this time? Because I mean, that's probably the last time you want something to go wrong with your house when you're trying to sell it. Do people, do people like appreciate that? Or is that not something that they really care about that much? Speaking, I have had, I don't know if I could tell you how many times only because it's such a small number of people that have had actually used it while it was on the market, while it was listed, especially in the current market we're in because everything sells so fast for the most part. But, um, but what a lot of sellers don't know, and they have a preconceived idea about home warranties is that I'm providing a home warranty for the buyer, which is true. They are, but what they don't understand or they didn't don't, realizes that they have coverage while it's listed because most people think it's okay i'm going to pay for the home warranty for the buyer so when i close the buyer's going to get coverage well that's all well and good but they didn't know that they had coverage while it's listed so then it becomes a little bit more of a um, selling point to them now again it depends on which type of coverage that the, that you're providing or that the seller is purchasing um, Going back to that example that Ray gave about that heat exchanger, in his particular example, it was covered because there was a seller's preferred upgrade that, in all honesty, I don't think I've ever had that on a listing. It's just been the basic 425 versus the $75 extra. So had I, and I may change that from now on and just automatically make it a $500 coverage for my sellers because I didn't really thought about it like that. I knew it was limited at 425. It's still somewhat limited at 500, but it's more coverage than the 425. And then it's just a little bit better for the buyer once they take over and get the house. Okay. So it's the, the biggest selling point is that most sellers don't realize that they have coverage while the house is listed. Right. And if the house never sells, then nobody ever pays for it. Even if we... Put it Even if you put a claim in there, yeah.
Samantha, did you say that you are closing on one that you're representing the seller or the buyer? The buyer. Now you can still offer this, you know, if you haven't. Um, I did. And I, try, I asked them multiple times. They still waived that, it. That's okay. You, you can't, you can't get them. I'm a little nervous for them too, because I feel like, I don't know. Even they, if, go ahead. No, go ahead. Even if you mention it one more time or, or even at the closing, what you can say is, hey, if you change your mind on that home warranty, you have seven business days from today, day of closing, for me to order that for you. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask, if they have any time after closing. Seven business days before it comes, so it can be effective the day of close. Now, if 30 days go by and they call you and say, you know what, we really want that home warranty, they can still call my company and pay for it, but you're out of the picture, I'm out of the picture, and there's a 30 day waiting period before it would go into effect. Okay. So you can create a little bit of an urgency in saying, you have seven business days and it can be you know, effective the day of close, or if you wait past that, then there's a 30 day waiting period. Oh, and by the way, that's when most of the failures happen or the first 90 days. <laughs> and um, I forgot to tell this to Sue Ellen, but it might not mean much right now, but to some people that do, we're based right here in Michigan. We're out of Jackson, Michigan. Um, so we're a local local company. Um, that's kind of a feel good thing when you, when you do mention that because um, you know, if, if someone ever makes a claim, they're not talking to someone overseas for an answering service. They're gonna to talk to someone right here in DeWitt, Michigan or, or Jackson, Michigan. Okay. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, I'll get those passwords for you. I'll do my part yet this evening, but my corporate might not be able to do their part until first thing in the morning. Yeah, that's no problem. Tonight or tomorrow, I'll make sure and give you the instructions. Okay, thank you. Did you still want me to send you the email to ask? Yes, yes okay. please do, because I need your email address and your phone number if you can include your phone number. Definitely. Where Are you in Grand Rapids? Yeah. Okay, all right. If you ever want to do a cup of coffee or something like Sue Ellen wants to, I'd be more than happy to do that too. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Right. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. What did she do before? I hope so. I usually